Welcome to the 2023 CNA Activities of Daily Living Practice Test. This test has 20 questions with explained answers that will help you prepare for the test. Be sure to resuscitate the like button by turning it white. Question 1. You have a patient that is on a bowel regimen, but he has not had a bowel movement in four days. What is your next step? A. Report this to the nurse in charge. B. Give the patient orange juice with Miralax. C. Encourage the patient to drink more water. D. Nothing. This is normal. The correct answer is... A. Report this to the nurse in charge. Report this to the nurse in charge. Your patient most likely has a history of constipation. A bowel regimen means that a patient is on medications on a schedule to keep their bowels moving. If the patient is not having bowel movements, they could potentially have a bowel blockage. It is not within the age scope of practice to provide medications to the patient. Question 2. You are assisting a resident with ambulation. This patient uses a cane for ambulation. How should you assist this patient? A. Stand on the same side as the cane. B. Stand on the patient's weaker side. C. Stand behind the patient in case they fall. D. Walk backward in front of the patient so that you can see if they fall. The correct answer is... B. Stand on the patient's weaker side. A patient should hold the cane on their stronger side. Therefore, as the aid ambulating the patient, you should stand on the patient's weaker side. This helps the aid assist the patient if the patient were to fall toward their weaker side. Question 3. You are providing education to a female resident about proper perineal care to promote self-care. You explain to your patient that it is important to wipe from the front to the back to prevent bacteria from spreading from the rectum to the what? A. Uvula. B. Urinary metus. C. Cervix. D. Uterus. The correct answer is... B. Urinary metus. The metus houses the urethral opening. Wiping from the back to the front can cause bacteria from the rectum to spread to the urethral opening, causing a urinary tract infection. Education on proper hygiene is essential to patients, especially older adults who are more prone to UTIs. Question 4. You are assisting a diabetic patient with eating and he only finished 25% of his meal. What should you do? A. Report this to the nurse in charge. B. Nothing. The patient may not be hungry. C. Tell the patient that you will try again at dinner. D. Chart the patient's meal. The nurse can see it in his chart. The correct answer is... A. Report this to the nurse in charge. This should be reported promptly to the nurse in charge. A diabetic patient may receive insulin before each meal. If the nurse gave a patient insulin and the patient did not finish his or her meal the patient may suffer a hypoglycemic episode. Offering a patient his or her favorite snack may be beneficial. Question 5. You are assisting a patient with eating and know that the patient has orders for a clear liquid diet for a colonoscopy tomorrow. What would you expect to be on the patient's tray? A. Milk, tea, and soda. B. Water, coffee, and milk. C. Jello, Sprite, and broth. D. Soup, coffee, and tea? The correct answer is C. Jello, Sprite, and broth. Clear liquids are liquids that can be seen through at room temperature, 72 to 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Liquids such as soup or milk are not clear and should be avoided on a clear liquid diet. Although Jello is hardened at lower temperatures, at room temperature it is a liquid. Question 6. You have a resident with Alzheimer's disease who is refusing to eat any of her dinner. What is your response to her? A. Your family wants you to eat. You should at least eat for them. B. The doctor will be upset if you don't eat. C. Tell the patient that it is unhealthy for her not to eat. D. I respect that you do not wish to eat and report it to the nurse in charge. The correct answer is... D. I respect that you do not wish to eat and report it to the nurse in charge. Forcing a patient into eating is unhealthy. Alzheimer's patients sometimes refuse to eat or even forget that eating is a necessary part of living. The aide should ascertain why the patient does not want to eat. Does she like the food? Is it too hot or too cold? The CNA can then report this to the nurse in charge. Question 7. 
You are assisting a patient with ambulating with a gait belt. The patient is starting to fall. What should you as the aide do? A. Grab the gait belt and slowly lower the patient to the ground, putting most of the weight on your legs. B. Use the gait belt to catch the patient by leaning forward. C. Yell for assistance so someone can help you catch the patient. D. Let the patient fall and assist them up. The correct answer is... A. Grab the gait belt and slowly lower the patient to the ground, putting most of the weight on your legs. Using proper body mechanics, you should grab the gait belt and gently lower the patient to the ground. You should use your legs to bear most of the weight so that you do not harm your back. You should never lean forward to try to catch the patient. This can cause you to harm yourself. Question 8. You have a patient experiencing dysphagia and must be on a dysphagia diet. You are assisting the patient with feeding. What type of diet would you expect this patient to be on? A. Pureed B. Clear liquid C. Mechanical soft D. Regular The correct answer is C. Mechanical soft Dysphagia means trouble swallowing. A dysphagia diet should consist of soft and or moist food to help the patient swallow it better. Sometimes patients on a dysphagia diet will also require thickened liquids so that the patient does not choke on thin liquids. Question 9. You have a patient that has had a stroke that has residual left side weakness. He asks you to assist him with dressing him. How should you assist him? A. Help him dress by standing on his left side. B. Have the patient sit while you help him put his shirt on. C. Help him dress by standing on his right side. D. Have the patient lie down so you can assist him with his pants. The correct answer is... A. Help him dress by standing on his left side. When helping a patient that has suffered a stroke and has unilateral weakness, the aide should assist the patient by standing on the patient's weaker side to assist them with dressing. This helps ensure that if the patient were to become weak, you are on their weaker side to assist them. This patient is needing light assistance, so having the patient sit or lie down is not necessary. Question 10. You have a patient who usually takes longer than other patients to eat lunch. Her physical therapy sessions are after lunch. The physical therapist has stated that the patient is unable to complete her full 60 minutes of PT daily. What should you do? A. Explain to the physical therapist that the patient has a right to eat as long as she wants. B. Take the patient to lunch earlier so that she gets her full 60 minutes of PT. C. Report the physical therapist to the administrator. D. Tell the patient that you must assist her to eat quicker. The correct answer is... B. Take the patient to lunch earlier so that she gets her full 60 minutes of PT. It is important for patients to receive their full time for physical therapy. If the patient is missing most of her PT sessions, it is necessary for the aide to take her to lunch earlier to allow her adequate time to eat and perform PT. Question 11. You have a patient that only likes to shower once weekly. It is important for you to realize what? A. Your facility has a shower schedule and the patient needs to be educated on her allotted shower time. B. Cultural differences in bath taking is often overlooked by healthcare professionals. C. The patient's family needs to be aware of the patient's refusal to bathe. D. The patient is at high risk for depression if she does not shower more than once weekly. The correct answer is... B. Cultural differences in bath taking is often overlooked by healthcare professionals. As healthcare workers, we often forget that there are cultural differences in things such as bathing. Healthcare professionals see lots of dirty things, so our minds can think dirty a lot. However, it is important to remember that there are cultural differences in such things as bathing, and the patient may not feel as though she is dirty. Her culture may not allow her to bathe but once weekly. It is important to speak to the patient and build a rapport with her to figure out her reasoning behind her bathing beliefs. This way, she does not feel as though you are trying to force her into anything. Question 12. You have a patient that does not drink adequate fluids. The patient is at risk for all of the following except A. Mouth sores B. Bad breath C. Skin ulcers D. Swollen gums The correct answer is D. Swollen gums A patient who does not drink adequate fluids is at high risk for dehydration. 
Patients with dehydration are at risk for mouth sores, bad breath, skin breakdown, and tooth decay. Question 13. You have an 85-year-old patient that you suspect is in pain. You know that indications of pain can include which of the following except A. Insomnia B. Seclusion C. Participating in social events D. Agitation The correct answer is C. Participating in social events It is not uncommon to see geriatric patients suffering from insomnia, seclusion, and agitation when in pain. They may stop participating in social events and activities that they once loved. Poor psychological health is a strong indication of pain in the elderly. Question 14. The focus of providing ADLs in your patients include the following except A. The comfort of the CNA B. Comfort C. Safety D. Dignity and respect. The correct answer is A. The comfort of the CNA. Comfort, safety, and dignity or respect should be your top priority when caring for patients as a CNA. It can be a challenge for a patient when they can no longer provide care to themselves, especially when it comes to the more sensitive care like bathing. Ensuring dignity is a priority as a CNA. Comfort can range from a lot of things, like ensuring the water is warm and not too hot or cold, to combing a patient's hair the way she likes it. Question 15. You have a patient that is mostly independent with her care and needs you as a standby assist. She is very slow at dressing and providing oral hygiene. How do you approach this? A. Ask her to let you help her get dressed more quickly because you have other patients to assist. B. Continue to be a standby assist in case she needs your assistance. C. Ask her if she is able to get dressed a little more quickly so that you can go assist your other patients. D. Ask her to start taking her showers on the opposite shift. The correct answer is... B. Continue to be a standby assist in case she needs your assistance. It is important that you are patient and kind to the patient, not making them feel as though they are a burden to you. As we age, our reaction time is slowed significantly, and those neuro cells are never replaced. It is normal for even an independent elderly patient to perform tasks slowly. Question 16. Which of the following patients would you most likely use a soft toothette on? A. A patient with dentures to clean the gums. B. For a patient that has sore gums. C. For an unconscious patient. D. For a patient with dry mouth. The correct answer is C. For an unconscious patient. Soft toothettes are typically used for unconscious patients. The aid should have the patient lying in a lateral position to provide oral care. The lateral position significantly reduces the risk of aspiration while providing oral care. Question 17. You are applying lotion to a patient's skin upon request. Which part of the body should you avoid applying lotion? A. Back. B. Knees. C. Chest. D. Toes. The correct answer is D. Toes. Applying lotion to the toes creates a medium for bacterial growth. Further, if the feet stay wet and moist because of the lotion, skin breakdown may occur and cause foot ulcers and infections. Keeping the toes dry is the best way to decrease risk for infection. Question 18. You are assisting a resident in shaving his face. Which of the following is a correct step in shaving the face? A. Shaving upward on the neck. B. When shaving the chin, an upward motion should be used. C. Use long strokes when shaving. D. Rinse the blade every two to three strokes. The correct answer is... A. Shaving upward on the neck. When shaving the face, the aide should first wash the face with warm water to soften the hair... After applying shave cream, the aide should use short strokes to shave the face while shaving in the direction of hair growth. The blade should be rinsed between every stroke. Question 19. A patient's care plan states that he is a two-person assist and must use a Hoyer lift. Which transfer are you most likely making with the Hoyer lift? A. From the bedside commode to the chair. B. From the bed to the bathtub. C. From the wheelchair to the shower. D. From the bed to the stationary chair. The correct answer is... D. From the bed to the stationary chair. 
A Hoyer lift is generally used to transfer a patient from the bed to a chair and vice versa. The patient in need of the Hoyer lift is usually immobile. The patient is a two-person assist, meaning two persons should assist him while using the Hoyer lift. This ensures the safety of the patient. Question 20. Which of the following should be considered when providing hair care to residents? A. Age. B. Race and culture. C. Hygiene. D. Transfer status. The correct answer is B. Race and culture. It is important to be cognizant of one's race and culture when providing hair care to residents. The aide should ask questions and inquire about the resident's preference and needs when it comes to their hair. Hair care varies tremendously between races and cultures. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. Check out these videos that can help you with your future studies. Don't forget to resuscitate the like button and subscribe to our channel. And please share this video with your fellow nursing friends.